Find the curvature of the curve given by the vector valued function r of t at t equals three. We can determine the curvature using either of the two formulas below. In this lesson, we'll take a look at both formulas. But before we do, let's start with a quick review. The curvature at a point measures how sharply the curve bends or how quickly it changes direction. The curvature of a line is zero. The curvature of a circle is equal to one divided by the radius of the circle. More formally, the curvature measures how quickly the direction of t of t, the unit tangent vector, changes with respect to a change in arc length s. And we define curvature as shown here below. Notice this requires t of s, the unit tangent vector function, to be defined in terms of s arc length. And therefore, we use the chain rule as shown below and rewrite the curvature formula as the curvature equals the magnitude of t prime of t divided by the magnitude of r prime of t. And there's also the alternative formula shown below where the curvature k equals the magnitude of the cross product of r prime of t and r double prime of t divided by the cube of the magnitude of r prime of t. And again, for our example, we'll take a look at both of these formulas. Going back to the example, using the curvature formula here on the left, before we can determine t prime of t, we need to determine t of t, the unit tangent vector function. Recall the unit tangent vector function t of t is equal to r prime of t divided by the magnitude of r prime of t. This indicates for the first step we'll determine r prime of t. To do this, we differentiate each component of r of t with respect to t. The x component of r prime of t equals a derivative of four plus two t with respect to t, which is two. The y component equals the derivative of negative one plus three t with respect to t, which is three. And the z component is equal to the derivative of two plus t with respect to t, which is equal to one. Notice the vector function r prime of t, regardless of the value of t, is equal to the vector two comma three comma one, which indicates r prime of three is the same vector. And now let's determine the magnitude of r prime of t which equals the square root of the sum of the square of two, three, and one, which gives us a square root of 14. And now we can determine t of t, the unit tangent vector function, which again is equal to r prime of t divided by the magnitude of r prime of t, which once again gives us a constant vector. And therefore t prime of t is equal to the zero vector, again, regardless of the value of t, which of course also indicates that t prime of three is equal to the zero vector, and of course, the magnitude of the zero vector is equal to zero. This indicates the numerator of the fraction equal to the curvature is equal to zero. Applying the curvature formula, we have the curvature equals the magnitude of t prime of three divided by the magnitude of r prime of three. We know the magnitude of t prime of three is equal to zero, and the magnitude of r prime of three equals square root 14, because the magnitude of r prime of t equals square root 14, which indicates the curvature is equal to zero which if you notice shouldn't be too surprising. Notice each of the components of r of t is linear and therefore the graph of r of t is a line in space. And we'll take a look at this in just a moment. And this question doesn't ask, but if the curvature of a line is zero, the radius of circle of curvature is always the reciprocal of the curvature and the reciprocal of zero is undefined. And this should make sense. If r of t is a line, there is no circle of curvature. And now let's use the formula shown here on the right to verify we get the same result for the curvature of r of t. We already found r prime of three here on the left, which is the constant vector two comma three comma one. To find r double prime of t, we differentiate r prime of t, but because r prime of t is the constant vector two comma three comma zero, r double prime of t equals a zero vector, and so does r double prime of three. And now we need to find the cross product of r prime of three and r double prime of three. Let's use a three by three determinant where the first row of the unit vector is i, j, and k, the second row is r prime of three, the third row is r double prime of three. Expanding the three by three determinant, notice each of the two by two determinants is equal to zero, indicating the cross product is equal to the zero vector. And of course, the magnitude of the zero vector is equal to zero, once again indicating the numerator of the fraction equal to the curvature is zero. And for the denominator, we'd have the cube of the magnitude of r prime of three, which equals the cube of the square root of 14, which we can write as 14 to the three halves power. Using the second formula for curvature, the curvature equals zero divided by 14 to the three halves power, which of course, once again, equals zero. Before we go, let's take a look at this in space to verify r of t is a line. r of t is the red line. 
I also included the trace vector at t equals three, indicating we determined the curvature at this point on the line and the curvature is zero, but of course the curvature would be zero at any point on the line. I hope you found this helpful.